filled with your rats, not so deep. You wish like a black stuff or better than the other. Listening to Urban Revolution on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. I'm your host, and on my right hand is right. Debbie. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you tonight? Afternoon, I'm evening. Sorry. We're gonna make it whatever we want it to be. And uh Debbie is pulling uh double duty right now. She's kind of working the base station for the uh what is it, the neighborhood watch program they outside riding around with a a, be- a beacon on top of the car trying to catch thieves uh as they you know enter people's homes <laughs> so uh Debbie is working the base station basically so when they call in to her and tell her we got somebody she call the police for them and, and stuff like that you know we're catching criminals. <laughs> We're catching the criminals. You know, we're just trying to stop them and everything. We understand, you know, that there are some issues and problems out here with people uh, needing things. But, uh, you know, the way you do it, man, it's, it's just a different way to do it, you know, than to break in on your neighbor and rob him and take everything. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they have to unify out there and uh, make them a nice, a nice group and a squad and then go at the right people. You understand? And uh, that's what I'm here in Detroit uh, all about, you know, uh, bringing that unity and that togetherness. And uh, I hope to build me a little Hamas in Detroit City and uh, get some respect, okay? And uh, let's, let's leave it at that. Uh, you know, this is, uh, listener supported radio, Revolution Radio, and uh, we appreciate it when you hit that donate button. And give a dollar or two, you know, to keep us on the air, especially to keep me on the air. You know, I come on, and keep pumping it to you. You know, the truth, the four one one. You just heard Nighthawk, the uh, station owner on his commercial, say that uh, he gives a voice to everybody. You know, all kinds of different opinions, and that's true. You know, he got the neo Nazis on here. He got me coming on. I'm not a, a, a black nationalist or nothing like that, but uh, you know, my opinion is kind of different from uh some other opinions you may have heard and uh you know everybody getting uh you know equal time on revolution radio you know and uh you know you got angels on hand you got devils on here so you got to decide you know what you listening to what appeals to you you know what i'm saying and which one are you no you <laughs> <laughs> there it is you know what i'm saying I already know how it works. Yeah, what's, old foe. <laughs> what's going to appeal to you is, uh, you know, what 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 you uh, what you about, you know? I got me a call. Hello. Yeah, when I am. Hijacker, what's up, my man? We haven't oh, discussed man, what the subject is, Hijacker. How are you calling in already? Or was you just excited uh, to hear from me? Well, no, I'm just trying to jump ahead of the curve. I want to. I want to invest in your show. Okay. Uh, so, we'll hit that donate button. All right. Well, now this is how we're going to do it. What I'm going to do is, and I want to see if you're going to invest. Yeah. All right. So, what I'm doing is, um, I'm trying to get Nighthawk to, to to form this corporation, and I'd be willing to put, I'd be willing to buy five hundred dollars worth of shares. Uh, how much would you go to form a corporation? Yeah, main share, buck a share. A buck a share. All right. Yeah. All right. Would you Would you invest in your own share? Yeah, when I'd I invest. I'd invest. How many shares? I can't. Uh, I can't divulge how many shares and everything, but uh, you know, I don't want. But at a buck a share, yeah. I don't want to tell everybody what I'm holding. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> right. And how much I'm holding. But if it was a nice, straight-up legal corporation, real simple, one of those, uh, I think it's called an S-corporation. It's, just, it's a real simple thing. It's uh, it, it's like two pieces of paper you send to Delaware or Nevada or something. Uh-huh. It's, uh, it's, it's the most simplest form of corporations. Yeah. There's thousands of them formed every day, and, you know, well, once you make some work corpor- out. Once you make a corporation, there's certain things a corporation has to have, you know, uh, like you have to have a, a, a corporate body. You understand? You have to have certain corporate meetings and et cetera. You have right. To- you know, you know, you need three people. You need a, you have to have a secretary. You have to have a treasurer, and then you got to have um, uh, the CEO. I think it's called right. And that's yeah, the but, board. Uh, it's rules and regulations and all kind of crap you got to file. You know, you got the government looking at you and different things. You know, no, not an S corp. You're not getting it. An S corporation is like it's like real simple. It's yeah. like. Um, I can't tell you how simple it is. It's like 50 bucks, and you yeah. do it out in Nevada, yeah. and they give you a phone. Uh, you get a you get a number. You get an address box. Right. Um, people do it all the time. Well, and you know Delaware what? used to – well, yeah. I, I think I think that would be a great idea if you make a corporation out of uh, Revolution Radio and start selling stocks and bonds. Of course, you don't want to be beholden to anybody. You don't want anybody to get you get 51% of your shares. You know, and start telling you what to do and everything. So you always got to watch out for that. Yeah, well, no, he could only sell um, at a main share. He could only sell close to five hundred thousand, and then he would stop it. And that would keep him. That would make him have control. Yeah. Basically, yeah. that's how you have to do it. You, but yeah, I, you know, if you figure five hundred, uh, 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 a half a million shares, even if the station just got the initial um, sold the initial hundred thousand shares, which I think he could sell pretty quick. Yeah. That would give a shot in the arm to the whole radio station. I think the format would fill out. You'd have a webmaster. Um, you know, yeah. who knows? Maybe well, within a year, the yeah, thing I could think, be worth $10 million. You know, I've listened to Freedomizer Radio. I've listened to a New Rev Radio. I've listened to, you know, some of the other radio stations, you know, that are out here doing their thing. And I'm telling you, Revolution Radio is at the top of the game. You know what I'm saying? So uh, they definitely going to make it. I think this radio station is going to blow up. You know what I'm saying? So you, no, no, that, you're not getting it. When I am, this is this is a model. This is what's getting ready to happen. It's like a, it's a dam. Okay, if you yeah. think of a dam and it's cracking, and behind the dam is all those mines and everybody that's that's been locked down. Yeah. But now they don't have jobs. Now they're sitting surfing the internet. This is the wave of the future. We're just some of the water that's come through the dam. This when is that the dam wave breaks, every single station. Every single little station that's doing this, that's going to go a model like this, is going to make money. It's going yeah, to be yeah. alternative. Is going to be just like bam. When that thing breaks, you know this thing could be this whole station could be worth ten million. Well, I tell you right year. now, man. Uh, television, television, and everything, all of it is headed to the internet. You know what I'm saying? Everything is going to be on this internet. Uh, radio, television, everything, and it's going to blow. Like you said, this is just the beginning. So if I was Nighthawk, I certainly wouldn't get this up, you know. Oh yeah, no. And the other thing is, is that you know, if you invest, um, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw uh, five hundred every uh, two months. I can do that. Yeah. Um, I got that much. But uh, I, I want the contract. Right. I want a contract for a show, that are four days a week for a couple hours, and see after a year on the show, then I got my listener support built up, just like mm-hmm. you're building yours up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyways, that's portable. Then your personality. Then you can go to another station. If you don't like what you're getting out of this particular station, yeah. you can take your whole crew and your whole station and say, um, you know, I I'm going to go over here. Take my whole program. I'll just get up out of here. Right, because people like, they like your cynicism, that right. you don't believe anything. This is my cynicism. Not what you always say. I believe a whole lot of stuff, man. Oh, you don't trust anybody when I am. I, you're a hardcore. I trust, I trust you know, who I trust, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, when somebody starts to talk to you, you know, the first thing your mind does is saying, now I know, I know this man's going to lie to me. No, so it I, all depends like a, on who it is. It all depends on who it is. Let me tell you, trust is something you got to earn. You know, you trust ain't something you just give away to people. Like, Hey, I trust you, man. I trust you. Trust. Is something <laughs> you, have to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It has to be earned, man. I earn what I am to earn to earn trust from somebody like you. I, I'd like to have to know you for like a decade, and then you still might not even trust me. I know how your mind works. Okay, okay. I'm a, I'm a, 
I would just leave it at that. That uh, uh, hijacker knows me. <laughs> well, no, you've been around the block. You just know as soon as you know. Yep. Uh, you realize it. Yep. Yeah, you right. realize how many. Go ahead. Yeah, just realize how many people lie every day. Do you realize a person has to lie well, I, I every also single day? How people fear uh, pain and they fear death. And anytime they're threatened with death and pain or suffering of any kind, they fall. You know, they even your 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 nearest and closest friends, uh, you know, who claim to be loved ones, just when the gun is in their face, you know what I'm saying? They fall. So, you know, you just got to understand the weaknesses of people, and then you put as much trust as you as you possibly can in a person like this. I can trust him that far, but not this far. You understand? He's not gonna give up his life for me. Okay. And, and that kind of thing. They're not the kind of people that I am. I'm the kind of person that'll give it all up, you know, for a friend. And uh, I don't have many friends. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any. I I lost my friends uh, as soon as I got into the political world. Yeah. And started whacking on people, and they started whacking back. Man, all my friends who were supposed friends disappeared, and. I, all I got is my kids, my wife, and that's it. I don't have any friends. Yeah, exactly, man. You know, uh, being a friend is is something else. You gotta put, you gotta lay it all on the line. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you get into a spot where, uh, hey, man, look, boom, this is it. You know, all the things I was dreaming about and that I wanted to do, uh, it all come down to this moment. What am I gonna do? You know what I'm saying? Are you gonna give it all up and walk away, or 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 be a friend? You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, along that line, I'm talking about trust. Now, I've, I've got to know Nighthawk, you know, just listening to him or whatever. But you would agree, he's the kind of money, he's the kind of guy that if you were to buy shares out of this corporation, he's not the kind of guy to try to do uh, a fast one with it. Right. Don't you agree? So far, so far, from what I know and what I've, you know, I've never met Nighthawk personally. You know, I talked to him on the phone, I talked to him on Skype and et cetera. And in my dealings with Nighthawk, you know, through the radio station and everything, he been 100% and straight up. You know what I'm saying? And, and honest, and he's been fair. And that's all I can say about Nighthawk right now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If he, you know if he saying? got the corporation I and I bought think, the shit, go ahead. I, you know, I don't think he would rip me off or, or anything like that, you know, just based on what we've already been doing. You know, like I said, you got to build that history. You know, uh, before you get trust and everything like that. And then how much trust do you get? You know, am I ready to trust Nighthawk with my life at this point? No. <laughs> you feel me? But, yeah, but if he had a legal corporation, you would buy some shares. Oh, yeah. You would trust him with that. Yeah, I would. Trust him with $500. What's $500? That's peanut money. You yeah, what yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, that ain't going to hurt me none. So what do you do? Put you up to pimping us tonight? <laughs> no, no, this, uh, I, this, uh, I, 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 no, 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 I want to see, see, man, it can start well, look, we don't money. have a corporation going, we need you to hit that donate button right now, and give, give us five hundred. give us five dollars, you know, five hundred if you can, you know, and, uh, keep this station pumping, keep it going, you know, uh, what about now, hijacker? Well, uh, what about now? Yeah, we we don't have a corporation. What about now? Give us five hundred. Can you right hit now. that donate button and uh, give uh, Nighthawk five hundred dollars? Well, would you rather me give money or give my mind and give my time? We want the money. We'll take the money. <laughs> uh, I don't. You know, I I think the people who follow me would beg to differ with you. They would rather have. You realize what you have to pay somebody. But look, brother, you ask me, okay? Yeah, but I'm saying, would you realize what you'd have to pay somebody to do what I'm doing? Look, you, do you have a radio show? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on the verge of it. I'm on the you verge on the of verge it. of it. You see, you're still right. talking well, about I, game. You're talking well, about Well, the thing is, I, I, I've come down to it. I'm, I'm just going to basically, uh, I need a platform because things are so fluid and moving in the Hi, political Jack, realm. Hi, Jack, you've been talking this game for a long time. Everybody's been trying to get you to get a station, uh, to get a, a, a show and everything. And guess what? I believe you would be excellent, man, with a show. You know? Why you haven't got one? I don't know. You seem to have a lot of time, you know, in order to, be, to come on and do a show and everything. Uh, you talking, you talking to talk, but you're not walking the walk, brother. And you know, it's a lot to be said out here about a lot of things. 
Well, you know what happened to me is I, I, I went over to Chez for a while, and I tried to do a couple shows over there. And then just as I'm getting going, I did two shows. And then for the next three or four times, um, he's not around. He went to the store. He took a walk, this and that. And and then I, I did a show, one show here for Revolution Radio, and I um, uh, wasn't able to raise anything, and that kind of, kind of yeah, uh, bombed you Tim, out you and tim done that hour was it an hour or two hours you, y'all done together and uh it was yeah well it's the type of show that i want to do i mean i want to what i'm going to do is what i do in real life and that's yeah. change political reality with, with concepts and strategies there you go ideas you know yeah. just like right right now the number one thing is to try to keep obama in office that's the number one thing there you go and well, uh, i'm not like I'm not, romney Romney's yeah. taking apart Ginrich. He's using Ginrich's words. What really? did I, did, uh, remember how I told him how to take them apart? Yeah. Use his words, use his deeds, use his associations. That's all you have to do. Use his history. Yeah. And it, boom, he used it all. And he t- he's taking Ginrich apart. All you got to do is get on him and his wives, and that's it. And, you know, uh, Newt Gingrich is done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, he's no, he's not faithful. He's, he's a traitor, you know? He don't stick by you when you're down. You understand? He got wives and stuff to get sick, and he leaves and go get somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Well, he's worse than that. He's he's uh he's uh, just a bag of crap. I was yeah, using who another wants word. Yeah, clown like that. On top of that, he's talking a whole lot of uh racist crap and homophobic stuff and all kind of uh different things like that. Uh, nobody's inter- interested in Newt Gingrich, you know, except like I said, man, you know, even your angels or your devils, one or the other. Now, would you take a pick? Yeah. <laughs> well, the, big, the, big, the biggest problem with Ginrich is he's got a little Napoleon Bonaparte complex to him. He, he's, he's, he is a smart guy. He's got genius level IQ. But the problem is he's a psychopath. Yeah. Inside that man is little dictator. This he, guy was, he, got he, a, was, he, was uh, he was the chairman uh, up there in, uh, uh, in, the, in the Congress. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, as soon as he speaker, got out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the speaker, as soon as he got out, man, he becomes the uh, a lobbyist. You know what I'm saying? He's working for China and everybody else. I mean, get oh, yeah. money. Oh, yeah. Well, no, he did the, the most favored nation status. Uh, the, the Republicans did that. And uh, he was the one that uh, headed that up. And that's they, that's when they started cannibalizing our economy and shipping yeah. all the jobs over, yeah. middle of the 1990s. All I could, now, if, 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 uh, if uh, white folks fall for the sucker play, you know, that uh, – uh, Obama is giving the Negroes entitlements and everything, and I'm going to keep the Negroes out of y'all checks. You know what I'm saying? And uh, just vote me in. Uh, then uh, so I feel sorry for them. That's the sucker play. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, we need Obama now. I mean, my God, you can't have, you can't have, you can't turn it over to, to the presidency to, to these white establishment men. They'll go martial law. Man, they trying I mean, to roll the whole clock back, man. The Republican Party is like, look, just forget the Negro. We don't need him no more. Let's just roll this thing back to uh, uh, 1782 and get it cracking like it used to be. You know? And I'm like, roll it back. I wish they would roll it back, you know? Because I'm tired of sitting here on top of all this ammunition and guns and everything. You know what I'm saying? Just waiting for them to roll it back. I'm tired of it. I'm ready to use it. <laughs> Roll it back. No, nah, no, nah, you got to think how not to use it. That's the whole idea with a gun. Please. Is that well, if you ever walk around with a gun, then the first thing that you learn is we're not the gun. The gun has a life in itself. It's like uh, the gun decides what kind of situations you're going to get in. Like I won't leave the house. My kids make me promise not to leave the house armed. Right. So, but if we, once you put a gun on you, uh, then all of a sudden your whole way you you act. Uh, where you go, what kind of situations. You, know, you don't had, get in situations I've, you know, where you even... I've had CCW permits and everything, you know, and, uh, you know, carry uh, concealed weapons permits and all that. You know, I walk around with a gun. And when I, when I used to walk around with a gun when I didn't have a CCW permit, it used to be a misdemeanor just to carry a gun. They would uh, give you a ticket for it and uh, have you go home. But then the second time, it was something else, a little bit more. But, you know, it was no big deal. You know, they took all the laws, all the misdemeanors, and made them felonies of uh, of uh, some nature, some degree. Like this is a fourth degree felony. This is a third degree felony. This, you know what I'm saying? Not jaywalking is a felony. You know, of the fourth degree or the fifth degree. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's it's crazy, man. 
Uh, I walked around with a gun. You know, people was up in my face talking trash, making me mad, doing everything else. I never shot anybody. You know, I'm not a, I'm not insane, a criminal. I know the rules and the laws and et cetera. I know when I can and when I, and when I can't use a gun. You know what I'm saying? And I don't take using a gun lightly either. Not at all. Well, you know, the only time that I actually pulled a gun and um, forced somebody just to, uh, you know, not approach me, it was in D.C. My dad had a liquor store yeah. on uh, Constitution Avenue, and um, it's called Redskins, believe it or not. It was right across from the Sheraton Hilton. Uh, my dad used to bribe all these bankers with all his booze. And, hey, I can believe that. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, so I was a delivery guy, and I Indian forgot what like happened. That. Yeah, I forgot I was delivering liquor um, to, you know, or share it to these little old ladies or whatever. I, in my little cart coming up the street, and this big black, very well-dressed fellow was coming the other way. And uh, I forgot what happened if he uh, knocked my cart or something, knocked it off, and I said something to him. He walked a little bit more, and, um, you know, I don't know if I said something rude to him or whatever, but he turned around with this thing of rage. And he said, what did you say to me? And he was a Nigerian. Uh -huh. by his, I could tell by his accent he was African. And um, I said, well, you knocked over my car. You did something. And he goes, I got diplomatic immunity. I'm going to kick your white ass. He's a Nigerian. He started yeah. coming towards me. And, man, I reached for that 25 because he was a big fella. I mean, he, would, he probably would have took me apart. Uh -huh. And I tapped. I was, I was right by a mailbox, and I tapped it right on the mailbox. That's what said, you, you know was what carrying, this is? 25? 25. I said, you know what this is? And he I stopped right in his tracks. Track, yeah. But, uh, he stopped. That might be something I don't know about, but, uh, a 25. You a little not, 25? It sounds, well, 22 is what I usually hear. About. Uh, no, 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 it was 22. It was a little 22. Not a 20. I've never heard of it. No, 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 it was, a, it was 25. No, I think it was a 20. I think there's really? a 25 out there. Most people have a little 22 or something, but no, if maybe you go carry a 20. A 22 makes somebody mad. You know, you hit them with that a couple of times, man, they'd be like, I'm really pissed off. Now, and they usually jump you and beat you and everything else, you know, and take the 22. You know, you got to do a head shot or a heart shot with a 22 or you ain't, or, or you in trouble. Oh, that's not true. When I, <laughs> a 22, a 22 is an assassin's weapon. It's that's a right. high speed bullet. It, it is. bounces all around. A 22 is Rip. an assassin's weapon. 22 don't make a lot of noise. You understand? Uh, you can hold it in your hand real easy. Uh, take a couple of pops, but you got to take those pops to the head real quick and keep walking. Yeah, it's you got that me? velocity. It'll, it'll it'll push through the skull, right? But anyways, he turned around and walked away. I got my card, but that was about one and only time. Yeah, but uh, personally, I like the nine millimeter myself, or uh, I would go with the forty-five. You know, the forty-five. You know, but uh, I wouldn't be messing well, with I, nothing smaller than a nine millimeter. I use. I have a forty cal. I like a big bullet. Oh, yeah, the I like 40. A, I like the 42. Smith & Wesson, boom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Snub nose, compact. Yeah, that's uh, I love that gun. I, right. I, I love it. I sleep with it. I mean, I love it. Right. Even when I move around the house, like right now, it's like three feet away from me. I mean... Even when, they, I, go out, they, even when I go out in the garden, I carry it. I carry it everywhere. Guns, I, love, I love that gun. These guns are cool, the little handguns and stuff, but you can't power trip on a handgun and stuff like that, man. It's just... It's just a little handgun, okay? As you look at the Iraqi, the troops that go over to Iraq and different things, man, they got hand grenades. They got uh, uh, M16 rifles. They got grenade launchers. They got uh, uh, everything up on them, all kinds of different kinds of weapons. A forty five. They got a K-bar knife. They got everything, and they're coming back in the bag dead, okay? So, you know, you out there with that little pea shooter, it just gives you like a, maybe a chance, you know, but you don't want to, you don't want no trouble, even though you got the pea shooter. Okay. So oh, no, all it is is a trade. When, when, as soon as you use a gun in modern day world, your life's over. It's yeah, done. Yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to be using that, you know, or, or doing anything with that. Only thing, if you get into a situation where it's, you know, it looks like this guy's or whoever's just going to take your life, you know, uh, uh, the only thing you can do is pull out this gun and try to save yourself. That's when you use a gun. You know, and that's the only yeah. time you use it. And I'll tell you another thing. Uh, it's not it's not well known. Um, but if you kill a cop, yeah. not only will they kill you, but they may kill a, a member of your family. 
Oh, we already like know everybody. Everybody in the city in uh in the urban areas already understand that the cops are the biggest gangbangers there are. If you, if you kill a cop, then every cop in town they all they all rally around. They, would, they get frenzied up and crazy. Oh, he killed he killed Joy Joy. We gotta get this motherfucker. And they all start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then here, here they come. They are, they all when they find you, they're gonna shoot you all to pieces. This that and the other. You know what I'm saying? And claim you pulled out on them or you didn't stop or whatever. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And the judges and and uh, politicians and everything they understand that you know he shot a cop. You know, and and the rules are, yeah, you can kill him now because he shot a cop. That's the rules, man. Okay. So when you start. Well, you got to have that one eye on. You got to have that, man. You can't look to put a badge on a target and walk out there. I mean, that's a lot of guts. You're you're above ground, man. I mean, somebody kills a cop, then that's that's it. They're they're dead. They're dead. But it's, it's even more than that because uh, there's lots of people out there who will, will be willing to make trades out there. Yeah. I ran into a guy one time, his brother had shot, just shot a cop, and the cop ended up killing the guy. Right. Well, some of the cop's buddies found his brother six months later or something, and this guy told me that they, they, they broke both his wrists and both his ankles, yeah. and he didn't even know why, and then when the cop was walking away, they said, that's for your brother, because he shot that, he shot my buddy who was a cop. Yeah. And then here he was, a younger brother. He didn't have anything to do with it. And yet he got his arms broke, his uh, wrist and his ankles broken. Yeah, I can believe that. You know, all these psychos and sadists and everything, they, they uh, gravitate right to that job, you know, where, where you get some power and go out and exercise that over the population. They all have like a little God complex, it seems. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, well, they're, they're, they're alpha males. They got they got different blood. It's like Viking blood. They're, they're like the Vikings of old. You know what yeah, I mean? They just yeah. they got to conquer. You know, like one time uh, uh, I was going to a movie and I just bought some dope. I think I was like seventeen, eighteen years old with my friend Mike, and I, we we're going to go see some movie. Anyways, a cop pulls us over in Crystal City, Arlington. Yeah. And so I says, Mike, I better take the dope. And uh, in case the cop searches us or whatever. So he gives it to me, and then the cop gets us out of the car. He could tell we're stoned. And anyways, I take off, and I run, and I was quick. And, I mean, cop cars were screaming all over. I remember I jumped, slid right over one of the hoods. And then finally I got to the railroad yard, which is at the end, and it was like a 30-foot drop. And the cops had cornered me right there. I went up on the rail, and I thought all I got to do is just drop down. Yeah. I cross over this railroad yard. They'll never get me. I got it. So I'm standing there, and I'm looking down, and I'm just thinking, that, that's kind of far. Anyways, the cops are right there. says, don't do it. You break your neck. Yeah. And I said, well, it's not that far. And the cop's talking to me about six feet away. He says, that's far enough. You cannot drop that, kid. Do not jump. And I says, well, maybe. And he goes, no, maybe about it. You're going to at least break your leg. Right. And this is not serious. You need to get off that rail and get over here. So anyways, I looked, and I thought, ah, yeah, God, he got me. Right. So and he, then was, they took me in, and then about an hour later, he came in all stone-faced, all, all up. And I says, because uh, I had flown the pot, and they had found it. They used a dog. So when I was at that police station, he comes in all stoned up, and I says, uh, so what I'm being charged with? And he says, uh, resisting arrest or something like that. Didn't even charge him. I says, well, what about what about the pot? Did you find it? And he goes, oh, yeah, well, he maybe. Too, right, you're right. And I says, and I says, and I take a look at him. I'm like, oh, I says, you're like a Viking. You sort of like took the booty, and he's all stone faced and everything. He goes, yeah, I'm like the Viking man. That's right. my booty. <laughs> anyway, yeah. he never charged me with it. It was Mr. Meter or fine, and then that was it. Right. You know, the cops is getting theirs. You know, they get they they get their dope. They get their money. They get they get what they get. You know, they do their thing. You know, but like I said, they the biggest gang out there. And if you kill one of them, they gonna they gonna gang bang. They gonna come back. They you know, gang banging. You know, they're going to put out an all points bulletin. They're going to do everything. They going to, they shake down whole neighborhoods. Going house to house. house. Apart. Yeah. They take, oh, yeah. All, uh. they take all, your, they take all your relatives and, and shake them down and slap them around in the police station and everything. All right. And, can we get back to the and show? And your relatives be telling you, you uh, yeah. This is conversation y'all should have on the side. This is where he at and this is what he did. Your relatives be scared, man, because they be hitting you hard. You know what I'm saying? We're losing our listeners. Yeah, but if you don't, have if you don't got a conversation. Right, but if you don't got a big monster like that, you can't keep the law and order. People got, 
certain certain amount of the masses. They got to know that there's a there's a big animal out there like that. That's the only thing that makes you, them scared. The only thing I hate is that most people don't believe that the animal is out there. They believe we got some nice, uh, loving. Uh, uh, these are America's finest. You know what I'm saying? And really, they're America's worst. You understand? And they put a badge on them, and, and uh, the killers go after the killers. <laughs> yeah, when I am, but th but think about thinking about American cop. Would you rather have an American cop, or would you rather have a Russian cop, or a Chinese cop? I mean, third world cop. What's the I mean, difference? you got to got to admit. I mean, the American What's cop the is nothing, man. What's the difference? Thirty years of uh, living hard, grinding poverty, and just as mean as corrupt. That's where I'm I mean, at. These, I'm these... right here in, it, in the middle of it. Thirty years of grinding <laughs> poverty. I'm in Detroit, man. Well, I'm sure Detroit cops a lot meaner than a Washington cop. They just get that way. You yeah. can't be messing around with people. You know. They got forty-five thousand people down at Cobo Hall right now, uh, trying not to get foreclosed on on their homes. 45,000 people. You know, uh, this is tax foreclosures. Man, you got to get out of there, I am. Yeah. It's a dying city. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's problems and issues here. Uh, let me say this. You are listening to Urban Revolution on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. And uh, my doggy trying to talk and everything. You be quiet, Dash. And, uh, you know, uh, Debbie, like I said, Debbie was doing double duty and now uh, her people have came to the front door and they're okay. Well, listen, when I am, before I let you go, listen, just email Nighthawk. Um, what the, the, the deal is, we're going to try to get a hundred thousand dollars. We're going to try to sell a hundred thousand shares. Oh, really? If we hit a hundred thousand, I think that's the time where we will all put our money in once we got that commitment. So just email Nighthawk, how much, how many shares you'd be willing to buy okay, if you were to go. My heart got to put it out there what we're going to get for the shares. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, dollar I mean, share. We get Name a share, shares, dollar we, share. What are we getting a share of? You uh, you're getting a share of the station, the corporation a that owns the yeah, station. You got to build that corporation. You got to show me where the value is, this, that, and the other. Da, 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 da. Uh, where he going to put the money? Is he going to buy big servers? Is he going to, is he going to, where, where's the money going to go? The hundred thousand. Uh, it's going to go on to making sure that you got a show for a year and I got a show for a year. I got a show right now. <laughs> yeah, but uh, look, look, everything's shaking. Crow, Crow got shot down. I mean, he, he, Crow you know, on his own. Crow left. Crow left because he wanted to uh, go and do that. Uh, that 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 uh, the website that he's got going where he's going to make some money. That's why well, Crow. Crow listen, Crow's Crow. Crow uh, he he uh, he said on chat he's in for three three grand. Crow tried to leave 3, shares. Uh, Crow, Crow tried to leave a long time ago, and uh, you know me and him got into it a little bit, and then he decided to stay, you know, uh, for for whatever reason, uh, because of the way he was leaving. You know, he was just he just come on the radio and saying, "I'm I'm leaving, I won't be back." But and then, yeah, but if he uh, okay, if, that's if, fine, that's fine. But I I didn't think that was the proper way to do it to just tell the station owner on the same night you on the radio that I ain't coming back. After he gave you a play and everything and put you on the radio, you know I just I just didn't think that was right. So you know we got into it a little bit about that. Uh, he decided to stay and everything. He cried and boo hooed and this that and the other, and decided to stay and that's all good. But but now that he's got his uh his website going this that and the other, you know he want to go and work that and, and and stay on top of his money. You know the money that he's making. Right, but what I'm saying is if we take the station on this kind of economic model and go corporation. Then, then Crow is young again. He's going to jump back into the game, and it's a profit. He's an economic man. That's how you have to appeal to that guy. He's a capitalist. Okay, let's put it down. right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's an old school capitalist. You know, with old school ideas, or you know, religion, politics, everything, man. You know what I'm saying? I called him a dinosaur. You know, and that's all good. You know what I'm saying? Well, you're 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 a you're a you know you're a dominant. You know, a uh, black lion, he's a dominant white lion. And both of you all grew up, you're the last generation of prejudiced people. We you are. Know, you're pretty much. <laughs> now, that's something else, man. I'm not prejudiced. Oh, any, any, pretty much any white person over 60 or any black person over 50, uh -huh. they're prejudiced. It's just natural. Let me you tell know, you this. 
I'm not prejudiced. I don't have I don't have a problem with white people other than you know the bullcrap that they do and all the racism that they pull. You know that's the only problem I have. And then I tell people about it, you know, and talk about it, you know. And I'm I'm talking to other white people that are not uh that are not racist, you know. And and you know, come on with me, be on my side. You understand? This is what they're doing. This is how they're working it, you know. And uh, uh, we need to straighten this out. We need to level yeah, the playing field. Right, but the truth is, why I'm, mean, you have to admit that there's a lot more blacks that are racist than whites that you've met. There's a lot more blacks that they hate white people than white people that hate black people. Like I said, man, you know, uh, they hate what's being done and, and the kind of uh, stress and the kind of pressures that they're up under and the kind of games that's being played. But they don't really have a beef against white people, for say, for being white. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 you know, like you would have a beef against me because my skin is black. I mean, that's just ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, that you would build a whole institution around the color of my skin in order to hold me back. You know what I'm saying? And then work this for, uh, for generations, you know? And, and then when I, when I bring uh, attention to the institution, then everybody say, Oh, well, he's like us. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm not like you. And that's what I'm bringing attention to. I'm not a racist. You know, I don't like racism. Black people don't have the power to be racist. We cannot institute racism. We don't control the banks, the politics, the uh, 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 the economics uh, in this country and this and that. We can't turn uh, the, the military and the, and the police forces and et cetera against white people so that you're getting beat downs on a regular basis. So that the prisons are full of white people and not black people. You see what I'm saying, man? We can't do that. Oh yeah, no, no, no. You're right. There's institutional we, we, uh, racism. We can't, with the... we can't. We can't bring the institution down on your heads and then look past it like it's nothing. We can't do that. You feel me? So. Oh, exactly. No, no. You you don't have the organs of the state. No, that that, that no, I agree that. with that. And I, if we ever did get the power and the muscle to do that, I hope it never happens. I hope it never happens, you know, that, that uh, blacks would gain power and the Mexicans would just turn everything on white people, you know, in, in revenge for what's been done. You know, you know I, I'm right along with uh, uh, Nelson Mandela. Forget what happened. You know, forget uh, the past and let's move forward, you know. But some of these knuckleheads like Newt Gingrich and uh, uh, Romney and the rest of them, uh, don't want to move forward. They want to roll back. They they think they got things wrong by coming this far. This far, you know. Yeah, well, I I I, I can't disagree with you. That's for sure. I mean, um, I just can't disagree. It's it's uh, but you're right about the blacks. Uh, they they can't get the power. We don't it's have like the power. we don't have the power right. to institute racism on white folks. That's, just to put it that way. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, you know, Louis Farrakhan had a lot of black real radicals around them, and they just, they had all this talk about the killing the blue eyed devils, this and that, and Farrakhan says to them, Are you all crazy? Are you that crazy? Yeah. Do you know what these white people would do to you? He just, you know, they had all these people, we can take them, we can take them. He just says, You're out of your mind. You're crazy. <laughs> the Nation of Islam has been trained and conditioned. They will not touch a gun, they will not come near a gun. OK, because they already understand what the FBI and the police forces and all that will do to the Nation of Islam. The Nation of Islam is a church. OK, it's a it's a it's an Islamic church. The Nation of Islam is what America wants to turn all of Islam into. It wants to turn Islam into a religion with no teeth. OK, so so the radicals and the, and the people that would that would uh, uh, respond to a. Uh, Colonism, and they will respond to a Western aggression, you know, and, and come back in a military way. They want to label them all as radicals, you know, get rid of them guys and turn Islam into a church that we can control just like we do Christianity. You understand what I'm saying? And, and that's where the nation of Islam sits today uh, with Farrakhan and all the rest of them. He makes a lot of noise, talks a lot of trash, but he ain't going to do nothing, man. None of them. No, 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 no. You're right. You're right. He's, you know, uh, he's even he's even put the call out. You come around me and you just want to talk about bombing or terrorism yeah, or whatever. God I turn gonna you. you. God gonna get you if you mess with me. Oh no, 
Yeah, not only that, he says he'll turn you right over to the FBI. He, he doesn't make no bones about it. He knows. Yeah, yeah, that type of thing like that. You know, he pushed that message out there. You know, if you mess with me, you kill me, you go ahead. God going to get you after. You know, God's not going to get anybody. That's why these guys is on top in the first place. God ain't looking out for nobody. Okay, it's, it's, it's superstition. It's, it's an idea in your head. Okay. If anything, well, I am. You can't. You can't go outside and look at the stars and look at the complexity. In fact, you know what? I, I ran across something that my one of my kids. Well, a couple of them are in the nursing program, yeah. and I took a look at how the human body is built. Do you know cells that they got in the actual machines, working parts within atoms within cells that are machines cells that they can actually take apart and put a blueprint. I know can, a lot about actually, cells. I know cells, they have their own consciousness. Every cell. You know? And so, where where do you think all this came from? What I am, you just don't think there's no God? It's just like, like it's, magical thinking? Just like it, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying there's no God, per se. Like, there is no God. You, you Like this, that, and the other. You know? But the gods and stuff that people are making up, like Jesus and uh, uh, Allah and Yahweh and all this... You know these these are these are these are made up uh, gods and etc. And, 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 and you know they, where people just don't understand and they superstitious and they believe in this and that. You got you got to go into your own self and your own being in order to understand God and to understand how this whole process came here. Okay, right. Well, just think about this. Let's say, let's just say you were God when I am, and you decided to create billions and billions, trillions of other beings. Okay, because you knew that the greatest thing that you could do was share yourself. If you were God, the greatest thing you could do would be share and give joy. To, uh, so you create all these beings. Yeah. Then you, they're spirits. Then you got to grow them. How are you going to grow them? You got to grow them by giving them a choice. Yeah. They want to love. What do they want to do? What you know, what, right or wrong? What do they want to do? You put them in this earth. It's like a crop. You, they go through hardship. Maybe there's reincarnation, they go back and forth, they get old souls, they learn, they grow, they suffer, they learn right and wrong. And then you say, you know what, I really need to help out that particular race on that planet, so I'm going to incarnate, and I'm going to actually go down there, become one of them, become flesh, uh -huh. and show them the proper way to live. Yeah. And this is how you grow spirits. This is how you actually grow consciousness. Have you ever thought maybe that's, that's the name of the game? Well, I'm glad you said consciousness because that's what people got to start looking consciousness, and you got to start to uh, uh, really figure that out, understand it, and really go toward consciousness and realize that your whole world and everything begins with you. That's where it flows out from, from you, uh, in all directions. You know, it all starts with you, and that's where you got to go to find out anything about what's going on back into your own self and your own being where you came from. And, uh, you know, I, that's as much as I want to say on that. But uh, as far as you looking for God and Santa Claus and all that other kind of stuff like that, it ain't going to happen. It ain't nothing's, nothing, nothing's happening out there like that. God ain't going to come down here and do, do you no favors. Okay? Well, I already know. You know, you already know. I already know that, that he had died. There's only a few things I know. Only a few things I know. Yeah. Um, the Bible is not the, the, the inherent word of God. Okay, I used to believe that, every word of the Bible. <clears throat> now that I know this other reality, I know people mess with it. Let me like tell the you one, that. The, like the one, let me just say the few things that I do know. One, okay. there is a God. Two, I can look around and I can tell that God is love. Just because everything, if you think about it, just look around your room right now. Yeah. Everything that you see has been created is almost the act of love to please you. If you just take a look. And the second thing is that, that if God is love, that means he had to redeem the species down here, which means he did incarnate in Jesus. He came down. Yeah. He got nailed to the cross. He says, you want, you want to come back to God or you want to get to God? You got to come this way. You're love. You got to do, you got to actually do the thing. You can't be selfish in life. I'll tell you, you got to be loving. This, man. If God, if God had a son and his son was perfect and didn't do no wrong, and, uh, and, uh, and then he let his son go and be crucified for a bunch of uh, jerks, man, that uh, deserve to be crucified. You know what I'm saying? He's a piece of trash for that. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, nah. <clears throat> nah he, was, he was responsible. 
He's responsible. So besides that, the, the son went along with it. The son said, I'll do it. I'll, said, I'll save him. Yeah, well, you know, it was no sooner than we were created and we, we got, the, we got, the son was, uh, was very, uh, uh, distraught about it and needed to be strengthened by angels and everything. And this, that, yeah, he's and, and, uh, he took that beating and, and got nailed to the cross and all of this, uh, for what? For, for people that deserved it? You know what nice. I'm saying? I wouldn't do he that was... to my son. I, if my son was good and great and it was a, a billion assholes out there, the assholes would get it. Not my son who was righteous. Nah, not if you love. If you, if you not if you love, you can't. Yeah, you, if you, you love, you create all these beings. If you, you, love, you create all these beings. You treat your son, and then you you treat the good person right. If you love, if you love, you feel me? Well, you love the evil. No, you gotta, you gotta, you create and, these and, beings. And you're responsible. You love good, and you give him the respect, and you give him uh, the glory, and the, and the position, and the place, and this and that. God, look, I, we got kids in here being uh, jacked off on and perverted on. You know, you got uh, murders. They find uh, women in the back of cars two at a time in Detroit. Okay, been choked out and everything. Okay, what's God doing? Sitting up in heaven looking, you know, like some kind of a peeping Tom. You feel me? You got to look, man, I, ain't got I, am. I don't have time for the stupid games. Okay? Yeah. For whatever reason, he had to let evil in for people to make a decision. Okay. He had to let evil in. If that is evil, God created evil because God is the author of everything, right? That's right. That's okay. right. He made evil. He made the devil. He letting the devil do whatever the devil want to do. You know, him and the devil was cool. You feel me? I, like, uh, I you, said, man, uh, you know, we can play this game all day long. You know, Yeah, but, but this is a, it comes down to whether you're going to be free will or not. What are you going to do it with your comes life? Down to whether you're going to be stupid or whether you're going to wake up and realize what's going on, you know? Well, put, that's why he came down. He came down to slap us all in the face and saying, look, and you monkeys, this Allah, is the way to go. Allah and Hercules and Thor, you can put all their names in a book and forget about them, okay? And then me and you get together and try to make the kind of world we want to have. Well, uh, that's not going to happen. This is Lucifer's planet. He's, he's got, this is his, this is his playground. Whatever so. reason we're here. I don't, I don't know what we did. I don't know, I don't know exactly what happened to uh, eons ago that we ended up in this, this, this hellish realm, but Jesus showed us the way out of this hell pit. So I, 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 I choose to follow him. It don't have to belong to Lucifer. You know what I'm saying? If the good men would just grow some gonads and come out of their house and take care of business, uh, things can get better. Things can get better. No. I was ask the question: Was this pre-planned, or was we all supposed to just be on the left out of this conversation here? No, okay. Because no. this is not what the show was really about tonight. Right. Look, we can. Uh, okay. It sounds right. like y'all having a personal conflict of interest between the two. Well, ages. I don't want to get into all this superstition, this hokey pokey. You know, God, Jesus left here two thousand years ago. If he came back today. Would he, you know, what would he do with me? Would he look at a car or a light bulb more than he would me? You know, I mean, that would be more puzzling to him or or or, or, uh, or a computer screen or to hear voices coming out of a speaker or something. You know what I'm saying? It would blow his mind. You understand what I'm saying? If he came back. Man, what, I, I don't understand this, 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 this such, such hatred. It's not, I, am. I hate stupidity. I hate ignorance and stupidity. And I want to wake everybody up. I really do. I want to break them from all that stupid religion and everything and all the fighting and the hating that they do over. Okay, well, what, what, what did Jesus say so much to get you so upset? Jesus ain't never said nothing, man. Jesus never existed. That's what I'm trying to tell you, man. It's bomb. Oh, oh, I see. I see. You just believe it's all superstition. You don't believe nothing. Wow. Wow. I believe what I believe, but listen, man, you know, Jesus uh, and all that kind of stuff and the Pope and all them, man, they're playing games with you, man. They Mason. No, it's not the Pope. Man. It's not that. It's not church they Masons. Andy. They Masons and, 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 and Knights Templars and different things like this. You know, they they meeting in secret circles, man, and playing games with you. You know, the pastor, man, got a Masonic ring on. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I know, I know. Believe me, the Luciferians, they, they got control. They, they, they got covens in every single city and town and in the Masons network. No, it's, uh, you know, this is Lucifer's planet, all right. That's for sure. All cities laid out. 
they understand that the energy and stuff and the power that you see is the light come down, the, the manifest in the way that it's manifested. So, you know, uh, the whole, the whole, what you're looking at, the all of nature is Luciferian. You understand? It's the energy. And, and the light come down from heaven. You feel me? So, you know. Yeah, well, what you're not taking into consideration is that there's an ancient, really old, high-tech, demonic, flesh and blood race among us that really controls this world. They're the ones that got these, these incredible spaceships. They're, they're interdimensional. They can move between dimensions. They're the ones okay, that, that okay. got control. Uh, well, we need to stop with the uh, with all the superstition and the religion and everything and start to uh, get down to the bottom of this and find out what they're doing and, and where they're at and uh, uh, what we need to do to handle this situation, that situation. You know what I'm saying? But all this stuff, you know, this hokey pokey spooky, you know, uh, God got me stuff. He ain't got you, man. You know, you make a wrong turn out there, you're going over the side like everybody else. No, well, I don't know. I don't know what Jesus said to, to, to upset you so much. I mean, he my God, enough. he never said a thing to me. If you look at that Bible, all it is, is reports of people saying what Jesus said, and the reports don't even match up in the Gospels about. Man, let you take a look at some of those words. You can't. You, it, was, it was incredible concepts. And yeah, they're incredible. Were, I mean, Shakespeare's yeah, a I good mean, writer. Shakespeare's a wonderful writer. Francis Bacon. Uh, he wrote he wrote uh, wonderful plays and, and et cetera. And he was, he was was a great friend of King James. Okay. No, I'm well, I mean that. I'm not uh, I'm not being an advocate for, for the King James Bible. It's just you know to, to believe there's no God and that that God would not redeem this world or just like just leave us a bunch of slime. I tell you what, if there is a God and He letting all this bull crap go on with little kids and and all the murders and all the uh, misery and starvation and stuff. <laughs> on in this world he need his ass kicked okay and let's leave it well, at what happens if we chose it one i am we didn't choose it oh i'm saying what, what you don't know that for sure what happens if we chose this uh you know we can go on and on all night yeah but i'm just saying as if you take a look take a look at it from another maybe we decided a long long time ago to do exactly what you're talking about, and to say to hell with God, we're going to do our own deal. Oh, we decided and we're doing our own deal. This is this is what we get. This is our deal. Nah. This ain't my deal. It's not my deal either. It's not my deal. Good I'm ready. Evening. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready to to make another deal. Good evening. Oh, uh, good evening. Uh, how you doing there? <laughs> we. I, this is D. Eastman and uh, Sarah Connor. Good oh, y'all listening to me? Uh, me and the hijacker. Well, this is really good stuff here, but we just feel compelled to just kind of jump in and add our two uh, Please do add a little bit to this conversation because, uh, you know, uh, Hijacker is on the hokey pokey and the God stuff. You know, God is watching and, you know, we can screw up as bad as we want to. But, you know, as long as we uh, be loyal to God, everything's going to be all right. Well, they say the sun shines on the good and the wicked. So Yeah, that's true. And also, I would just like to say, I, I do, I, I've been where Hijacker is. I mean, if you know, if you in America, you were raised in the gospel. I mean, 99.9% .9 of us was raised in the gospel. And we got Jesus out when we got off the boat and, from and the slave ship. And I understand exactly where he's coming from and how he feels about that. But, you know, Going through my some of my experience through life and the things I've witnessed, and also talking to many people from many different religious orders, yeah. um, and they believe the same way about what they believe in in their religious order as Christians do. Okay, yeah. and I don't believe, and so, and, and in them findings, I feel like this is my opinion that in, in, in listening to many people, I try to keep my mind open because I know. I don't believe that one only one person is right about the whole world and its creation. I just refuse to believe that one order is the right order and no other nothing else can matter because I've met very a lot a lot of a huge variety of people from all different backgrounds and they are spectacular. I mean, they are more human and humanitarian and compassionate than I've seen and they're not Christians. So, uh, or Christians as, quote unquote, you know, 
No, you don't have to be a you don't have to be a Christian to be a good person, you know. Well, well, well but, but what I'm saying, you know, when you are a Christian, if you're not proclaimed to be this or be that or Buddhist or Hindu, then you're not following the natural order of things as as he said or people call God. Yeah. And so therefore, if you believe in these things and you're not following that order, then you're in the wrong. And, and you're, you're going to go to hell. Something bad is going to happen to you. But, you know, yeah, no, the, Native, no, no, you're not gonna... the Native Americans, so, I mean, God, I mean, it's a name. It's a name that people reference in things that they believe in. OK. And, and when you use these names, I think it divides us as people. We all belong to each other, okay? First of all, we all belong to each other, but we all separate and divided among ourselves. But you notice, I notice the fish in the ocean are not divided. The birds in the trees I see every day through the winter, all four seasons are not divided. Everybody is in harmony. The grass that grows every every year, every summer, everything works perfectly. The only thing that's not working perfectly is people. Yeah. Everything in its natural order. So something, and when you watch that, that is a magnificent order. This, it divinely works perfectly. So I, I do believe that there is something higher and greater in, in ourselves because of what I see, just what the world does without the influence of people or television, just what the earth does. It's a miraculous thing, having babies. I watched a cat one time that I had have kittens. And it blew my mind because I never had a cat before. And he got pregnant. She got pregnant. <laughs> and she had these kittens. She not only uh, ate off the, the sack and cut the cords, she knew to pick them and place them. This is, I mean, who, this has got to be something great out there in us. But I know that for a cat to know what to do yeah. and to pick the bay, the, the kitten up and place the kitten in a safe place and come back. And then the kittens that don't make it, they devour it and get rid of it because they just know this is the natural order of things. So watching these things over years, I realized there is something powerful and great, but I noticed the key thing, that thing, you can call it whatever you want to call it, God, Allah, Buddha, whatever you want to call it. It is the same and it is in you. Call it self it and, is, then, and find and it. And you can call it self. But what you got to understand, I think one is touching on, it is in you. And even in Christianity, even Jesus said, it's nothing greater in me but the Father. I'm not great. Nothing is great. It's in you. And he tell you the kingdom of heaven is within. So, I mean, it's a matter of perspective. And, it, you know, people say, if you don't believe in Christianity, you don't believe in God. If you don't believe in this, you don't believe in that. No, right? no, no. Listen, whether they're Buddhist or, or, or Muslim or, or whatever else, the fact of the matter is, is when we all close our eyes that last time, when we die, then they're, whether they're Buddhist or Islam or whatever, they're going to see Yeshua. And they're all going to simply say, how did I miss it? How did I miss it? Of course, it was all about that, you. Right. That's your perspective on what you think you understand about it, right? No, the fact is, is that he, he was God incarnate. Nobody else has claimed that. Muhammad never claimed it. Uh, the Buddhist and the Hindus just say they're, uh, like, uh, the they're East, like pieces of God. The Eastman. Yeah. There is nothing you can do here. This They call it the gospel for a reason. It's the God spell. Okay? And once people are caught up in the God spell... You cannot unlock them in a day. Yeah. You cannot. I, no, you're right. You're right. You cannot exactly unlock right. them in a year. Um, what's it? You know they they are they are locked in. It's a mind trap, and that's I, why that's why the Vatican uses the mind trap. It makes them rich. Okay. Well, when I am, if there's when I am, if there's no God, what what what's but, the purpose of it all? Come on. I'm not trying that's to. Okay, understand. that's great. You just asked a great question. That's now great you have question. to find the answer. Okay, and you keep looking and you keep studying and you keep going within until you find those answers. But you got to start asking the real questions, just like you did just now. And you know, there ain't no God. And I'm not trying to convince hijack or anyone for that matter, anything. This is like, like one has said, it is a less, it is some, it's a journey you have to find as an individual, you know, and if you're comfortable, and my, I, I'm just, I said what I said to say this. Just open up all possibility. 
you know, open up all possibility because the world is just that. It's everything. If you open up all possibilities, there's only one thing left, and that's God. That's you. There's nothing else. There's nothing else left. I mean, but if you it's don't complete explore, hopelessness without it. Let me let me ask you a question quickly. If you only go, if you only live in the United States your whole life, can you really tell me what the the experience is like to go to different countries if you've never traveled in them? Can you tell me what goes on in how the people are? Can you tell me what they eat, what they do, how they live? Can you really tell me from your heart what you understand about the world? I can tell you. Never? Well, yeah, I can. I can. I can tell you what their nature is. And all of us are like salmon swimming upstream trying to find our maker. All of us are, are like just trying to get back to, they're trying to figure out who made us, where we come from, what is this all about? And you end up with God. That's all you end up with. All right, Jackie. Look, you, you know, uh, uh, you've got atheists out here and everything. They're not trying to swim up and find God and stuff like that. You know, uh, the atheists, you also have a uh, Satanist on, on the other end. You know, you got to study Satanism. I, you know, you got to read the Satanic Bible just like you read the King James Version. Uh, and try to figure out what are they doing? What are they into? You know, and, and what they into is no worse than Christianity. You know what I'm saying? It's all spookism and uh, 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 superstition. Okay? And I'm not putting anybody's religion down, but it is what it is. You, you feel me? And it's time. If for you me. have a tribe in the middle, if you have a tribe in the middle of the Amazon, I'm telling you, and nobody touches them, nobody talks about any of these religions. They're going to form their own religion. They're, they're going to have their own concept of God. It's just automatic because well, they were created. They're looking for their maker. The thing is, something religion, inside of us. Religion, God, and all that stuff was born out of dreams that men have, and and and, uh, and seeing other places and stuff like that. And they know in their minds that they've seen these places and 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 other places. And they say, well, yeah, that's a God. And there's this other place, and there's this and there's that going on. And uh, and then religions get born, books get written, and different things like that. You know. But, uh, exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that there's something inside of man in which they want they they, they want to find God. They want to find their maker. There's something they're inside. For they're looking for them all, their own selves. That's what they're looking for, their own being. Because this all starts with nothing but pure being. That's it. Being. And then everything Who else created comes. the being? Who, everything who put else? the desire in? To, Nobody to be created the being. Being in his being, it always was and it always will be. Wow, uh, being, wow, that's an act of faith. I mean, you could like, man, if you became a Christian, what I am, you could like move mountains and stuff like that, I man. You could like whip trees up. You have to find the being. And once you find the being, man, you know that nothing else can hurt you here or nothing because you ain't really here. But, you know, it's a whole, it's a whole lot involved in it. Okay, and, and you know I don't want to start sounding like a nutcase and stuff like that, so I'm gonna stop where I'm stopping. And well, the thing is too, it's really about growth, and it's about perspective, and it's also about how open your mind is and how well you are travel. Not travel in the respect of going from place to place, but just knowing how things work in the natural order of things, because this is how we learn. We learn by how the world functions. You know, it's just that certain people come in and change up the natural order of things, and now everybody's kind of off balance. But what I was saying about nature, it isn't really off balance until you start doing things to it, which is why we have a lot of problems with our weather, with our water, with the universe. But everything is divine, and it has a natural order, and it works fine. So it is something, I think, greater there. You know, and I think that there are things that have come into play, like religion and things like that, that has divided us. You talk about the Amazon, those people live beautifully. They have a great life. It's people who say they live primitive. Primitive to whom? You know, their life is normal. This is how they live, and they function fine. Who's the same? Right, and they, and they love God, and they love God, too. So, I mean, they, so got, they got their own says, system. Well, God may be the wind. God may be the sun. The air. They might appreciate everything around them. The leaves off the trees, the water that they drink. You're right. The Indians and Native Americans refer to everything as God because it was good. Oh, the great spirit. The great spirit. You know what I'm saying? It's about perspective and how you see it. You can call it what you want to, but it's you know the same. You know I, I really didn't want to do a religion show. And you <laughs> want because this thing here can just, you know. Because you I mean, really can't. 
You really can't get to the bottom of it. Like I said, the God spell is very powerful. And all, oh, yeah. of, all of these books are extremely powerful. You know, once they get your mind gripped and stuff like that, and you sit up and uh, like in the Quran and you, you re, you're learning that Quran back and forth and you're going through the, uh, all the, uh, 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 quoting and, 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 you know, uh, the wailing wall where you're sitting up there getting zooted up and, and rocking back and forth and zooted and into this religion and your mind gets all gripped up into that stuff. And man, you never, you there for a long time. Okay. Oh, well, listen, to when I am, when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit and you taste that, when that happens to you, the way your mind opens up, and my God, you're just like, you get like just a couple of I don't know seconds. why you can't tell that I am, that I am, uh, you can't tell that I am baptized in the Holy Spirit. Everything oh, I'm saying is coming out uh, in the Holy Spirit. You know, now you get uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit, you just like a, you become a completely different person. Brother, it's incredible. Speaking out of a spirit of nothing you know, but goodness, you, you understand, asked, and nothing you, but uh, love. You asked, and he, and then it's like when I am, he's absolutely right, and I, you're absolutely right too. It's just that you're looking at it from two different angles. Right. But well, let me ask you, what was the show about? What did it start out about? Because I missed it. I just this came show right in. here. Did we freestyle? Well, uh, actually, Hijacker jacked the show and started Hijack talking jacked about the show. everything. That's right. You know what we I talked about? We talked about what we were going to talk about tonight. They don't call him Hijacker for nothing. He yeah, jacked. you want to? You want to know? <laughs> you want to know what we talked about? Gun on our heads. We so, talked. We talked. <laughs> we talked about guns. We talked about racism. We talked about old white men. Old black men. We talked about money, corporations, Old black uh, God, everything important. We talked about important things. Yeah. Well, hijacker, hijacker. This was our format to set, not yours, and you set the format. <laughs> well, you know, I like that's this. not what I wanted to talk about tonight. All, I wanted know, to talk about issues and problems and circumstances with people. Yeah, but listen, I'm, I'm like this. You know, hijacker calling. I appreciate hijacker's call. Uh, anybody that want to call in, the number to call in, number three four seven. Six eight eight two nine zero two. I'm always uh, glad to have you call in and and add, you know, your comments and your questions and everything to the show. This ain't really my show. This is our show. So if you got a problem, you got an issue, you know what I'm saying? Well, let let Barbara. I'll tell you what. Let me get off and let Barbara let, let take the helm. I didn't want to. I didn't want to step on her. It's just kind of the way I look at talk radio. Is that it? It's a, whoever says the most important thing, whatever is the biggest. Whatever's the most important thing really is the one that should speak. So if you got something bigger that you can talk about or that holds the audience interest, that draws the numbers even bigger, yeah. then that's kind of like the person who that should govern the show, I'm so to speak. But you, let me get off. I'm not saying that you're not drawing that's a good crowd. Right. Yeah, I'm just saying we had a format that we were going after, but you jacked the show. But it's all good. Yeah, you don't necessarily have to get off, man. Nobody else is calling in. You know, uh, you know, we, we're fine, man. And if you want to, you know, hang around or whatever, I enjoy talking to you and everything. I would like to more. I heard about some stock. You can yeah, you talked about selling stock in the radio station. Yeah, in other words, we're trying to take the radio station and, and turn it into um, a 24-7 type big internet station. Oh. And so in order to do that, it's got to be funded. And we keep messing around with this funding over and over and over. We yeah, pour we, all our time into it. Yeah, we keep asking for a dollar here and a dollar there and donate it's here. It's just not working. And then we it's get, not working. get like uh, $400, you know, in a month and stuff like that, which, you know, it's, it's just not enough to do it. You know, if you got thousands of people listening. Uh, you know, just hit that donate button and give a dollar, you know, and everything and just blow this station up. And, uh, you know, we go ahead and give it to you real, like how it is, just like I'm telling you, you know, and then you can make up your own mind. You know, if you think God doing something for you, you know, and, uh, uh, and, you know, he didn't do nothing for that little kid that just got choked out the other night. You know what I'm saying? Uh, then you go ahead and you roll with that. So how much do what uh, for the viewers? I mean, how much would they need to be able to to come in and in a in a like you said a dollar? How many people would have to do that, and and how long? Every month? Every no. Well, what we need to do? What this is all theoretical now. So I'm taking point. So Nighthawk can't get into trouble for any of this, any legal thing. So it's all like a theory right now. But when the theory becomes fact, is when a uh, hundred thousand people. I mean, not a hundred thousand people, but uh, enough people buy at least uh, 100,000 shares at a dollar a share. I think that if we got $100,000 in, 
In other words, Nighthawk forms a corporation, a million shares, a dollar a share. Uh, then we, uh, I'm willing to buy 500 shares. That's $500. When we hit 100,000, that's when we all say, okay, he's got the shares set up. He's got the S corporation. And we hit 100,000. Everybody now, we put our money in. Then everybody puts their money in. Nighthawk gets to 100 grand. Then he hires and does what he has to do. Station, we set up the schedule. Then we actually have owner ownership in the um, in the radio station. That's that's how I envision it working. I don't think anybody's just going to put money in and just hope the corporation is formed or hope that another you know ninety thousand people are going to buy or ninety thousand oh, shares are going to be sold. You're looking for dividends. You know what I'm saying, and, and different things like that. You know, you, you're looking for you're looking to make some money by buying shares. You know what right, I'm and the idea is that maybe after a year, if if we get these people to invest, and like I would invest, you would invest, then we're really going to fight hard for the station. We're really going to try to make it work, and maybe in a year, maybe the station's worth ten million. Exactly. Then you made ninety percent on your money. Right. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Each share is worth not a dollar anymore; it's worth ten bucks. Well, you got some great ideas. You know, I, I'm sure Nighthawk is listening. You know. Well, everybody who everybody who's willing to do it. Just email Nighthawk. I don't know what his email is, but just email him and just say, look, if you were to do this and get 100,000 uh, 100, shares sold, then put me down for 500. I'm down for 500 for every two months. I can do that. I can come up with that kind of money. I think Crow's in for three grand, and um, I think Orange Ken, he might be 25. He'd be willing to buy, uh, buy $25, 25 shares a month, uh -huh. and just come up with some kind of economic model to make this thing work. Right. Okay. okay, that well, sounds sounds good to me. Yeah, that sounds good. So you need to make sure that all of the viewers that listen to this, the ones who are silent or not, knows how to contact yeah. you and know what their some information about exactly how from point A to point B to do this. So if they want to invest, they can. You know. Right. That's the key. That's the key. Just you mentioned invest. Right now, people are just well, given free will. Is. Right, and you got people that have honor out there that do donate to the station and give right. them money and time, but the majority of people don't do that. It just goes against human nature. But, but you, you know give what? them a chance to invest, they'll invest. You better believe it. Well, the thing about investing, man, is when you're investing, man, you're looking at what you're investing in. You know, you're going to look at the station, you're going to look at who's running the station, you're going to look at the execs behind. You know, can these guys, can these guys do it? You know, can they handle it? You know, who's, who's handling the fun? You know what I'm saying? And, 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 well, that's, uh, that's the biggest thing when I am. The biggest thing is that we know Nighthawk's not going to backstab us. We know, we know what he's like. He's not that kind of person. I mean, this, I'm saying this about a guy who says that I'm calling from a mental war. Can Nighthawk turn this, into, <laughs> can Nighthawk turn this station into a $10 million mega station? Can he do that? Oh, yeah. No, no. He's you all, he's all rock star. He knows business. But it, what I'm saying is nature is nature is not to steal. It's like the difference between would you trust Kevin buy stock from – let's say Kevin was in Nighthawk's position. Yeah. Would you trust Kevin with buying 500 shares of stock? I like Kevin Allen. Yeah, I'd buy 500 uh, shares of stock from him. Well, yeah, well I, I, I wouldn't trust him. He's, I wouldn't uh, trust him. With $500? Come on, man. No, no. I mean, come on. I mean, it, it gets us kids out of California and everything else, and for a dollar, he ends up going to – you know something else. I mean, what, what kind of person is that? You just don't invest in it. You don't. You don't let that person hold money. You don't. You don't. You don't let that person. You know, near I, don't, you. I don't know what the beef is. You know, or is, is Kevin Allen still on uh, Revolution Radio? No, no. He backstabbed. He he went. He broke away and wants to do his own thing. And he wants to. I guess he's form his own corporation now. I don't know what oh, he's doing. He okay, just, he's doing human he being broadcasting. Uh, that's supposed to be coming up here February the second, I believe, is the uh, the uh, launch date. Yeah, but it, human being broadcast. Right, but he doesn't understand. It takes synergism to do what Nighthawk's done. So far, it takes synergism. One person can't do it. Yeah. I mean, one person. Like, I mean, you got your own radio station. You got to have lots of people. People just don't exactly. want to hear from you. It's I like, got my radio station over there, and it's silent because <laughs> because guess what. I'm not the kind of business person that knows how to, to get this thing cracking and to get it going and to make it make it do something. Okay, I know it's a I know it's a, a wonderful vehicle to have, and I know that you know with the proper uh, nurturing and everything, I can blow it up into something big, get people to listen. I can turn it into a, a, a mega station, you know. But do you, you got to know how to do it? You know, you got to know the steps. That's what I'm. What, and the I am that. 
I am, what I'm trying to say is what Nighthawk is doing is how you do it. You have to have synergism. You got to attract unusual people, people that are smart, a diversity of people. Yeah. You got Tim, you got Joey, you, Pro, a whole bunch of people. You bring them in, and then you get a cluster of people, and then you got yourself a station. Well, you know, I then see, they got. He, he has some interesting people. Crow, Crow is interesting. You know, uh, when he does his uh, stocks and in, in his uh, his uh, market watch, you know that's that's good. Also, Francis with his uh, astrology, uh, astronomy, uh, good. Tim, Tim Dolgen, great with the UFOs and, and uh, you know, j just a good guy to listen to and everything on the radio. Me, myself, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm a good person to listen to on the radio because I'm a pump it to you. Absolutely. Uh, but, uh, you know, he, he's doing the right things and everything. He, he, he got a good station going and all that, you know. But, you know, if you put $100,000 in his hand, I think he got good ideas because of, because of the, already with the, with the, uh, the Total Truth Broadcasting Network and, and the 50 stations and everything, you know, uh, that he's selling for $50 a month. I mean, I mean, the guy has ideas, man. And I mean, he can, you can see he can go big. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. He spent his whole life. He was a rock star. He made like a million dollars a year and stuff. He yeah. knows all this business. Yeah. But what I'm saying is if he takes this station and he goes to the S Corporation and it works, he's got 49 more he can sell. Yeah. And he can come to your station and says, well, how about let's do the same thing with you? I think there's a whole damn of people that are going to come, and this is going to be a new hot ticket. All this tweet and, and inter Internet uh, radio, all the, I think it's all going to merge, and it's going to be the next – main media hub that's what yeah, i think it's, it's all going to the internet you know it's all going to go to the internet uh television everything just like you watching television and everything now all that stuff is going to be gone and it's all going to be internet it's all going to be pumped in where you can watch the net you can watch tv you can listen to the radio you know pandora different things i mean it's all just going to be pumped into one spot you know and and, and the whole nation will be connected you know uh and that that'll be great that's where it's headed okay you know, provided they don't get SOPA and all this other stuff and start uh, censorship and. Gotta have a reaction. Oh, too. She can't breathe. And I have to get her to the hospital. Oh, what crazy. What? What's, what's happening? Hello? Uh, okay, I don't know what, what went on there. But. Uh, no, I'm still on. Okay, it sounds like we dropped the call. And, uh,. But anyway, like I was saying, like I said, Nighthawk got uh, great ideas, and uh, I can see, you know, he just doesn't have, you know, a lot of capital to work with, you know. And which... Right, that's what I'm saying. If, if 20 of us pack up, and we all go for it, uh, then we all got skin in the game. Then you got 20 people, they're all fighting on the same page. That's the glory of a corporation. Yeah. It becomes an animal, and pretty soon it, we, it's like a gang, and we all fight as one. Then they're using that synergism. It should work. You should be able to take a dollar in stock and turn it into at least ten dollars in stock, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, you got got something for your investment. I mean, you know, you got failed corporations. You got uh, people that invested money and lost it in stock and everything too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like I said, it's all about the leadership behind behind the money. You know wh where you're putting it and uh, and what you're gonna do, which direction you're taking the station in. You got to have that vision and everything. Uh, that's necessary. So, you know, when you're putting that corporation together and you're putting the stocks out there, anybody that's going to invest is going to be looking at the people involved and they're going to be looking at where the, where the, where the thing is headed, you know, and the vehicle, how you're going to get there, you know, this, that, and the other, you know, before you ask me to drop a whole bunch of money into it, you know. So maybe he needs to put up a, a, a website or a page where, you know, he can do that. You know, you can, you can explain what this corporation is about, who's going to be heading up what and, who, and which direction we're heading in and, uh, and see if people want to invest, you know, and, and, and then let them know is, is you're taking a risk, you know, don't, don't expect that, you, you know, you're going to get a whole lot of money out of the investment. You may lose every dime, you know, but, uh, you know, you're going for it, you know, something big and it, and it looks like, you know, we're going to be able to make it. And that's the way I would put it out there. You know? Oh, yeah. Well, the biggest thing is, like, look, my dad, who's formed dozens of, of corporations, he used to form them in, in um, uh, restaurants because he used them as vehicles, and then he would sell. But uh, he was a cutter. I mean, he was he was kind of the bad man 
that, that like eight bad man, like he would say what you're looking for, like with the banks, he would yeah. type checks and have different accounts, but he would look for like the most greediest banker. And he goes, yeah. when you open the door and go into the bank yeah. and you just see how greedy somebody is, they just open their arms wide. Just it's economic come right hit, on in. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then yeah. he enforces over with these kiting checks and he's got bankers covering up funds and this and that, and he's giving them booze. But anyways, um, uh, he never, he never ripped off anybody that didn't deserve it. It was just all pit of snakes. But he goes, the biggest thing in investing in a corporation, yeah. He says, you want to make sure that the guy who's running it is not going to rip you off. You've got to figure out his nature. And that's the biggest thing Nighthawk got, has got going for him is that I don't think the guy has the capacity to rip you off. Yeah. He might have the capacity to screw it up or make a mistake, yeah, well, but not know, to yeah. evilly think it out like my dad. He, yeah, he, he would think this stuff through. I mean, this one Korean hooker, um, she was from Korea. And she had like 50000 she invested in uh, one of his liquor stores. Yeah. Anyways, he sold the stock over and over. And then some years later, she, was, she came to me and she was crying. And she goes, why, why did your dad do that to me? And she's crying. She goes, he sold the stock over and over. And he took all my money. How could he do that? And I said, Anyways, I talked to my dad. And my dad says, well, listen, I'll tell you something about her. She made all her money as a hooker uh, with the servicemen over in Korea. Yeah. So... I, he, she was going to stick me. I just stuck her first because uh, that's what I'm good at. I stick people before they stick me. Yeah, burn him out off type of situation. But anyway, <laughs> Nighthawk doesn't have that capability to, to to stick us. It's not he doesn't have that in him. That's why he's in the position he's in. I'm not. I'm not even concerned about whether Nighthawk would stick us or not. You know, I'm not worried about you know you know trusting him and stuff like that. It's about he might be trying to do everything he can the right way. This that and, the other, and still lose out. And you still lose your investment. You understand? It's an investment. There's risk involved. So what you do oh, is yeah, no, it's, you got to take gambling risk, though. Your risk has to be calculated. You know, right? You look at what you're betting on, and then you place that bet. So you know, if you're going to do the corporation thing, then you got to put it out there exactly what you're trying to do, exactly who's going to be, you know, heading it up, this, that, and the other, and uh, this is what you're putting your money into. And you know, and, and what you, and this is what you may get back, per se. You know, on your investment, you know that type of thing. So yeah, well, there's models out there for, for instance, uh, like Art Bell. Just his show, his show he did. Um, I think he sold it for just just his uh, just his name, the name of the show. Uh, I think he sold it to Clear Channel for forty four million dollars or something like that. Yeah, and that was not a station. That was just one show. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's what I uh, I heard the other night. Well, you uh, see how the, successful the Oprah Renfrey show was. You know, it was a pretty successful show. And uh, she made a lot of money on that show. She started out as a little reporter, basically doing uh, backyard stories, you know, chasing dogs around, you know, like uh, there, there are dogs on the streets, you know, and they might be biting people. I mean, she was that kind of reporter with big hair, you know, a little fat girl. You know what I'm saying? And somebody gave her a chance to be a talk show host, you know, uh, run up against Phil Donahue and the rest of them. And uh, it was history from there, you know. And the same thing can happen with Revolution Radio, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, except it's not just one show. you got a whole station. So right. I don't know what stations go for. You have to, you have to check. You know, I think once a listenership hits like a, a million listeners or something like that, and it's astronomical the amount of um yeah uh, money it's worth there's a there's a break point i don't know all the ins and outs of it but i know there's a model out there crow could probably find out that stuff right well you know i'm all for it you know if that's if that's what he wants to do and the interest you know because like i said uh you know the way we're doing it now you know asking for donations and etc and uh we're just asking for a dollar you know, the two dollars, you know, hit the donate button and, you know, not we appreciate everybody who does hit that donate button. But, you know, we got thousands of listeners and you come up with like four hundred dollars out of the month or three hundred dollars or something. And then the rest of the money, basically, Nighthawk got to dig in his own pocket, you know, to come up with in, in order to keep this station on the air and everything. And, uh, you know, something's got to be done to uh make it better yeah that's what i'm saying if we got that initial 
if, if enough of us put, you know, all bought 100,000 shares, that's enough initial money and that's enough commitment from people to where you would tighten the show up. You know, you would yeah. get the bumpers, you would get the producer, the guy, it's probably the webmaster, wherever it controls, I don't know all the ins and outs, but it's really like how or acid, the technical people. Yeah. Uh, really, they're the ones that you need to pay first. Those are the guys that need to get and the money. that's what you're going to need, too. You're going to need technical people. You know that. Right. That's where the money would go first. Um, um, but then you would tighten the show up, and then you would have it. And then just like me, you know, I start putting $500 in it, and I start doing about a two-hour show um, in the early afternoon or late afternoon. Yeah. Um, you know, now it's my station. <laughs> you think I'm not going to show up? Like right now, <laughs> right now, we, we're totally dependent on Skype. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Totally dependent. You think Alex Jones is totally dependent on Skype? You know, I mean, yeah. he got his own broadcasting studio and everything. You know, uh, uh Oh, well, you know what? Alex Jones, he would even throw a thousand dollars in this investment. Do you yeah. know why? Yeah. Because if Alex Jones bought, uh, let's say he bought a thousand shares, or me and you or anybody else gonna badmouth him? Yeah. You know how sometimes people badmouth Alex Jones, yeah. which I, I don't, I don't ever uh, ever do because he's he's firing in the right direction. So okay, maybe he's an ego, ego maniac, maybe he's got a, agendas, maybe he's a gatekeeper. But right. the fact of the matter is, he's firing bullets in the right damn direction. So you know what? I like are, Alex. I like everything Alex Jones be saying, except, except for a few things. You know, I'm not totally 100 percent on, but he he does whistle blow and he does tell a lot of stuff that's going on. Yeah. Oh, he's got big balls. No, you got to give it to Alex. Yeah, he's you a pro. Give it to him, you know? He's funny. He's an entertainer. I mean, he's top of his game. He's king. He's right. king. You got to give it to him. But anyways, what I'm saying is that he has numbers, and he's probably thinking to himself, in fact, when Revolution Radio a couple months ago when it was really getting hot, 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 then he all of a sudden opened up another offensive at seven. And now Alex does a... A TV show uh, from seven to nine central or something like that, uh, just so that places like you know uh, stations like this wouldn't suck off his uh, his listenership. So he had to go do it longer. So he set up a defense. But you don't think he would invest a thousand or maybe five thousand into stock here just to keep people from bad mouthing him? Hey, and then so. he also has got an investment. If it hey, does look, go look, big, then it, if he want to invest uh, a thousand or seven thousand to keep people from bad mouthing him, he can keep his money. You understand? Because uh, his money ain't going to buy my silence if if he screw up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I tell you that right now. Well, I'm just saying, there's some people they just they, they got to go after. You know, they're just it's the nature of some people. They got to just attack people. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just saying this, that uh, he can keep his money if, if he thinks he's going to buy people's silence about something he may have done wrong or whatever, or this, that, and the other. Uh, you can't buy uh, you know, the silence of people, you know, with your investment, if that's what you come into Revolution Radio for. Well, but no, well, the I, fact I of the matter is. is totally against that, you know. Uh, right, I, well, well, no, yeah, I agree, but this is how it would work. Okay, let's say he did put in five grand. And I, meanwhile, I put my money in and I got shares. Yeah. And then you think I'm going to go on the radio and I'm going to start to disc Jones? It just I'm depends on what Jones is doing. It just depends on what No, Jones. no, I'm going to leave it alone. I'll find, some, I'll find somebody else to pick on. I'll, I'll, I'll pick another fight someplace else. Not me. I'm not going to. It not has an me. effect. What I'm saying take, it has an influence. I take it right to Alex Jones. You know what I'm saying? If he screw up, you know, and do something dirty, like right now, he behind Ron Paul. You know what I'm saying? I think Ron Paul's a racist. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's where I'm at on that. So, uh, you know, Alex Jones, no, I disagree with you about Ron Paul. Totally. You know, I don't care how much money you dumped on this station. Well, I, okay, well, I, well, that's just like, that's political stuff. That's that's political. I mean, that's... It may be political, you know, it may be... It, I mean, the, the difference is that they say that, that Jones is a racist. No, may, I, don't, may, I, don't, may, I, don't, I don't think Alex Jones is a racist. Right, but because he supports Ron Paul, that's what I'm saying. You wouldn't, you no, wouldn't do that. No, it's just like this, man. It's like, look at Obama, man. Look what a, look what, what a, what a goomba Obama turned out to be. You know what I'm saying? He's for the banks, man. He's for the capitalists and everything, you know? Oh, uh, man, when I am, think about it. This black fellow, he's beautiful. He kept everybody calmed down. He kept the, 
He kept the food stamps going. Oh, he was uh, the, 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 all the bankers, all the he lost all his credibility. He's got his poll numbers way down. We need this guy as president. He's lame duck. We need to elect him. He can't do martial law. There's there's hardly anything else he can do. He, you can't mix the, the 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 race card with martial law. Look, you know what? I I understand why why Alex Jones is going toward Ron Paul. Ron Paul, you know, with his uh libertarian views and with his uh his constitutionalism and everything and taking it back and rolling it back to uh to uh some rights for the people and everything, you know, and getting out of all of this war and everything, man. Man, it sounds beautiful. It sounds great. You understand? And it's like if I was white, I'd be going for Ron Paul probably. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, but uh, you have to understand when I am, the true political reality, I'll, I'll split the political atom here for you. All Ron Paul is, is going to be used for, and this is a suspense, unless Jeb Bush jumps in, yeah. is he's going to get in and he's going to go ahead and do the austerity program, cut the stamps, cut the, cut the money, cut, cut a trillion dollars the first year, really put it to us, put the boot right on the back of us. Especially the poor, the yeah, blacks, the Hispanics. He's going to chop it all, and then he's going to get six months in. <laughs> he's going to say, "I got cancer," and Romney's got to take over. Romney gets the presidency, and then Romney turns around and takes uh, Rand Paul, Ron Paul's son. So Ron Paul is only going to be used to introduce this whole complete austerity program. And there's enough pe people out there that are stupid enough, like Alex Jones and the rest of them, that can't see. That there's no way in the world Ron Paul can fix 16 or 30 trillion dollars in debt. All he's going to do is just put us into grinding hardship. Well, I me mean, he's going to really put at, it to us. You can look at Obama and the problems he's having with his Congress and tell that Ron Paul going to have the same kind of problems with, with that Congress uh, should he get elected and everything. You know, they're not going to roll over for him. These capitalists, man, going to do their thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he's going to no, Ron Paul's going to get in. He's going to do the austerity thing. Everybody's going to go along with it. The whole country's going to be in uproar. I don't know what I don't know what the blacks are going to do when when a lot of those funds start to get cut off. I mean, it, it'll be hell. And then he'll just say, "I got cancer," and step aside. Then Romney steps up. Then Romney will take us into martial law, lock us down, and away we go. Yeah, That's I, one I, strategy. Let me let me just uh, uh, kill this black uh, stamp stereotype thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, some blacks are getting stamps and they got bridge cards and et cetera. But I'm telling you, man, there are more whites with bridge cards and, and uh, food stamps than there are blacks, man. Oh, I know, but not percentage-wise. Not, not, not percentage-wise, but the numbers, are, the numbers are bigger. Oh, um, yeah, I know. Everybody. Every, you, got, you got 50 million people on food stamps. Do you realize that if you would actually take the food stamps away or, right. and the unemployment that they, he's been keeping the things going – Right. You realize the bread lines would be six people wide, thirty blocks well, long, and you know, the soup kitchen. When you get hungry, you get conscious, also. You know what I'm saying? And you start thinking about the things that matter. You know, and not so much uh, uh, who won Dancing with the Stars last night. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? When you get hungry, you want to eat, and you start looking around like, "What's going on?" You feel me? So, oh yeah, so oh yeah. Naturally, what do you do? You start giving people food. You keep them on the streets. You understand? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Obama's kept, the, he's kept the poor. He's basically fed them. He's kept the peace. There's not a whole lot of cops that are being killed. You got basic law and order. Yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of hard for some people. People are losing homes, but you know, as we come into this economic storm, you know, he's he's done what he's needed to do, and plus. With the the friends' benefit is that a, a black president can't take us into martial law. I don't got to worry about being picked up and thrown a FEMA camp. He can't do it. You can't use a race card, or you're going to get the population of all those heavily armed Southern white boys. And when they realize, when the white military realizes, when the white cop realizes that the that the black with no credibility, who's owned by bankers, who's got no popularity, who don't have a birth push them in, Right, who wants to push them into a fight with the with the American patriotic movement, and it's going to be nothing but gunfire. Because I'm telling you, once white people start killing one another, I mean, there's a reason why you know you blacks call us the blue-eyed devil. When white people start killing, man, we can kill. I mean, we 
we own that business. I mean, when we can't kill brown people or black people, we, we start killing each other. I think we don't and understand when that starts, that, you know, that's understood, man. You know, we know we know what white people are capable of. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, that's why and, you got to have a white boy. Black people are capable of the same. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's just it's just the nature of people, you know, uh, when they're in power and et cetera, you know. Uh, let me say that you are listening to Urban Revolution on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. And this is uh, One I Am and Hijacking. We're kicking the politics today. Uh, you might have been expecting something different, but, you know, it rolled the way it rolled. And we're just kicking the politics and uh, different things like that. Uh, Debbie was here. Debbie, are you still in this conversation? Did the hijacker run you out? Hijacking and ran her out. She like she had enough. She ran out. You done hijacked the show. I don't do politics with everybody. You don't do I, politics. I, with, I don't do religion with everybody. You don't do religion and politics. Are you a Baptist? It don't matter what I am. What well, my belief is my belief, and I don't like discussing it with a whole multitude of people out there listening. Out there listening. You don't want them to know that you went to voodoo and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I don't want nobody to know my business about my politics, about my religion. Because religion is something that's personal between you and whoever you serve. Yeah. And you might serve the devil, so but you, it's your personal opinion. If you, and you have your right to feel the way you do, just like hijacker has yeah. this way, you have your way. You might not believe it. And you might be on the fence. You might not believe in neither one of them. So if you got a connection with Satan, right. you don't want nobody <laughs> don't to know about it. nobody to know. So I don't want to discuss religion really in an open forum. Okay. Yeah, well, I don't like religion, well, too, but I people said, say you shouldn't talk about religion or politics when those are the two most important things you should talk about. But anyways, uh, Barbara, do you think that uh, Romney, if he got the nomination from the Republicans, you think he can win? Or Mormon? Uh, you talking to uh, Debbie? Yeah. Uh, Debbie walked away after she got through saying what she just said. So, uh, uh, Debbie, Hijack had a question for you. Uh do I think Romney could win against Obama? Right. Mm, I don't know, man. I didn't think Obama could win. You know, I was so surprised when Obama won. You know? Oh, no, it was great. It was great. I was. He won it in the One World Order High Council. You know what I thought uh, was going to happen? I'm going to tell you what I thought was going to happen. I thought they were going to let him win the nomination with uh, you know, away from Hillary Clinton, which they did. And then they were going to run him against John McCain. And then John McCain was going to bring Larry Sinclair out of the closet and all the rest of them gays that Obama got with and just blow him out of the water. What's the question? But they never did bring that out. Okay. Uh, Hijack, I want to ask you a question. Yes, your question is what? Uh, yeah, Barbara, if, if Romney were if to get the Debbie. <laughs> you'll, be De Barbara, Debbie. you'll be Barbara tonight. Okay, I'm Barbara. No, no actually, Barbara. Barbara you you, my wig. Hold on. <laughs> Barbara Bush. Let me go get my wig. No, no. Let me get my wig and stuff in my bra so I can be Barbara. Get a white one. Get a white wig. No. You know who Barbara was? She was a uh, next door neighbor. She was a black lady, next door neighbor. She's like an aunt. When I was growing up oh. um, in uh, D.C., I lived on Good Hope Road. Oh, exactly. You said you've seen one, you've seen them all. Go ahead. No, no. It's her personality type. It's, uh, you know, I can, I can imagine sitting down eating chicken wings with her. It's just, I mean, I just, I already know what she's like. Exactly. Oh, don't go there with that cliche exactly. about <laughs> I just, I, Come on, <laughs> David, don't go there. I exactly. Go ahead, answer uh, the question, look, please. I'm about to leave, because David's going to get the type about the day and go, excuse my Dang. friends, the damn chicken wings. <laughs> well, crap, it also, don't, the other thing that I eat with uh, Barbara, that next door neighbor who's like an aunt, uh, with our crabs, we we do we, they steam crabs a lot. We ate crabs a lot together. Uh, crab legs too. Okay, but what's the question here? Do uh, you think if Romney got the Republican Party nomination for the presidency, do you think that Romney can beat Obama? No. Why? Of course not. not. Why not? He's Mormon. Because first, his base. So many things that are still yet to come out about him that y'all will see soon. You know, one, he's Mormon. Nobody really wants a Mormon. Okay. Two. This man got investments that are overseas. Come on, bring your he money to He got investments a, in the Cayman Islands. In the Cayman Islands. He got bring your money to Swiss a, you, If you want to be the president of the USA, put your money here and lose it like me. He made $21 million last like year. like me. And he See, didn't work a look, day. How the IRS 
ass on your back about $26,000 and fit. Make you feel all comfortable. Your I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, have an RS on you. Have somebody looking at your stuff. Disclose all your information. Bring your money here. Lose some money in the stock market like we're losing in the stock market. Put your money in American Bank and let it shut down with your money in there and see how we feel. You make $21 but you know million. What I'm saying? No, I would not believe that he would be. And if he does, as he, if he does, America is really more dumbed down than I think they. Why are. would they vote another rich, uh, multi-millionaire? That's the problem we got right here in Michigan. We voted. They, these people voted in the millionaire. Now they sit here like, oh, Lord, he taking half of my picture. Oh, Lord, and he got put on, he got billions of dollars sitting up in the Capitol, and he won't even rescue the city. Ron is a Wall Street junkie. Do. Why would you think I'm just going saying, to why do? would they put another Wall Street junkie in the in the White House? You know what I'm saying? Well, no, they, they, because they need a, they need a white guy to take us into martial law. They got to have a white boy. Really? A one world order high council decides this stuff. We don't decide it. Yeah. So well, you know, and, more power to them if they do. Like I said, I wish they just go ahead and roll this thing back as far as they can get it, and just let us get get it on and get it over with. You know, yeah. With that being said, I don't think that Romney can. I don't think he can come up with the sufficient numbers, even if they try to throw the election, which they do. I mean, they decide it, but it would be so blatant um, that I think that you're looking at. There's got to be somebody else coming into the scene, or Romney has to make an alliance with Ron Paul, and then uh, be Ron Paul's VP, and then Ron Paul going up against Obama. He could probably win. I think that he, he, Ron Paul could take him. Or they're talking about Jeb Bush coming back uh, in a brokered convention. Yeah, Bush. Jeb Bush. Good Lord. Okay. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, listen. Listen, Jeb Bush is the, the, the motto for Jeb Bush when he runs. I am nothing like my brother because he's not. Jeb Bush is nothing, nothing like George is, W. Bush. Anybody named Jeb actually win the presidency? When you got a, a wife whose name is Carlos. Carly, Carlos, who's Hispanic, that's the Hispanic army. So between the Republican uh, mainstream, he's got the pro-lifers. He's going to have uh, pretty much the Christian conservatives. That that block will be there. And then he's going to uh, get a good, good chunk of the Hispanics. And I think they'll take what's left of the liberal whites uh, and, the, and the blacks and what the Hispanics that uh, uh, Obama will have. He will, be tough. he will be tough to beat. I don't know if Jeb and Jed and, uh, you know, poor Mountaineer barely kept his family fed. I don't know if uh, Jeb could win it just based on his name, you know. And well, it's his, it's his personality. You know, he's a, he, uh, some people got that, he's got a, it's a mark to him. It's a, it's, it's like a, But you got to understand how America votes. America, they, they, they voting, you know, they, they star struck, TV struck. They vote for stars and stuff, man. They vote for people that look good. Is he tall? You know, how's his Oh weight? yeah, he's tall, he's handsome. How's his everything? Weight? How's his weight? Is his weight uh, proportionate and everything? Does he look good? Does he speak? Oh yeah, no, no, he's like a Romney. I'm, Romney's trying to pull a page yeah. out of Ronald Reagan's Does he card. Speak well, that's why Romney is doing so well because Romney looks good. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah, it's like Ronald Reagan. It's Obama. New New's got problems because he looks a little chubby. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know all these other issues and, and, and things like that. Not so much. Well, no, he's saying. a pig, yeah, Gamers, No, he's a pig person. And and his hair is all white. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, well, and, even, even the way he looks, and then when he laughs, he's got that little demon in him. He's got he's got that demon in him. Yeah, man, that's working against him. It's, you know, his look is working against him more so than anything else. You know, with Americans, you know, they starstruck, man. They've been, they've been, uh, TV televisionized and everything, you know? And yeah. Well, let me ask you one. I am. Let me ask you about this. Uh, suppose Bill Gates were to run. Uh, what would you think about the, uh, Bill Gates jumping in and, and running? He got enough money to win. <laughs> if you want to spend any of it, because that's how you really get in money. I know, but I mean, how do you feel about him as a person? Do you think he could do the job? Would it be something different, you know? You no, know, I don't know about What do you Bill think? Gates. You know, I look at Bill Gates and I look at, you know, all these eugenics programs going around, and Bill Gates seems to be uh, a big part of them. 
you know, of what's going on. He all over in Africa doing different things, vaccinating everybody, uh, giving everybody vaccinations and this and that. And, you know, and it looks like he's doing well and everything. But uh, the, the countries where he's vaccinating, you know, people are falling. Well, I mean, he gives money. He gives money all over the place. He gives money to schools. Uh, he gives money to the, um, the, the uh, don't you got a black college thing? You know what? You know what? They always they, they always claim they're giving away this and they're giving away that. Uh, Warren Buffett claimed that he was going to give away every dime he has by the time uh, he's ready to die, this, that, and the other. But guess what? When he made that promise and stuff, he got wealthier and wealthier and wealthier. And the more they, they get together in these little uh, charities and philanthropies, philanthropies or whatever, they get richer and richer and richer. Uh, Warren Buffett bought the railroad after after he said that. And... Uh, uh, you know, you watch these guys, man. They're not getting any poorer. They're getting richer. Yeah, listen, I just you I don't they normally talk about giving away all their money. Yeah, you know, um, I don't normally even look at the the chat room, but I see somebody put in there a uh, Miker who thinks Newt Gingrich is right. Well, let me tell you something, Miker. Uh, Newt Gingrich ripped off the contract with America. It was originally called Political Oath, a blueprint blueprint for retaking um, the U.S. Senate, House, and Senate. And it was yeah. mine. And he took the whole thing, changed the name, um, and all, all the way down to the, the, the contract concept and the unity and everything else. So what Newt Gingrich is, he's nothing but an intellectual property thief. And then what he did is he turned around and unleashed Carol Campbell and that governor, who would end up busting my family up, throwing both me and my wife into mental institutions. Of course, my wife, she did go crazy. Somebody got drugs into her. And then took my five kids and put them in foster homes. So... You can't tell me anything about that pig man, Newt Gingrich. Now, besides that, I already gave Romney the ammunition. It's, it's a, Newt Gingrich's deeds, his words, his acts, yeah. his, his associations, what he did with China. Newt Gingrich, I mean, uh, Romney's already got enough political weapons to put that guy in his grave. So I'm done yeah. with Newt Gingrich. But you think Newt Gingrich is so great, he's nothing but an intellectual property thief. Newt, no, I know gonna, firsthand. He, he, he's not going to be uh, Romney because just on his looks, okay? And if he were, if some by some miracle he did scoop past Romney because Romney, some uh, real bad dirt comes out on Romney or something, he'd never beat Obama, you know, just based on his looks and everything, you know? So, uh We'll leave it at that, you know. If America, well, yeah, no, no. Romney, his problem is, is that he's got that, he's got a thirty percent uh, white Christian conservative uh, Republican neocon base, and he's not going to get that. He's not going to get all those Christians because they think that, uh, and rightly so, they think that uh, Mormonism is some type of uh, cult or different religion. Well, don't they have like uh, five or six different wives and stuff like that? The Mormons. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Not not legally. They they when they became a state, that was part of the deal. I mean, they do what they do though. Well, oh like, yeah, uh, no. When I when I went through, um, you know, when I went through Utah, yeah. Uh, when I yellow school bus, my wife would travel across country with, with five kids and two dogs and my screaming wife. We pulled up to this, or no, the Cadillac pulled up to us, and this guy about fifty years old, he gets out. In yeah. the back of his car, he's got two really pretty 18-year-olds. And you could tell, you know how you can tell somebody's a daughter or somebody's a wife? Yeah. You could tell if they were his wife. Anyways, they're just taking a look at us. Uh, they take a look. Of course, my wife, five children. She's got, you know, she's gained 250 pounds, frumpy, you know. <laughs> right, right. You know, every side. And they were just looking at me. I'm just thinking, wow, look at the two completely different you worlds. You say your wife you know? gains 250 pounds? Oh, she had she had five babies in seven years. I destroyed her body. She's destroyed. Gone. Uh, I'm just saying, how much did she weigh before she gained 250? No, no. After you have the babies, one right after another, five yeah, babies, but you seven said years. She gained 250 pounds, which means she added oh, right. on two fifty. Right. On no, no, no. That's, that's how much had. she weighed. Oh. No, yeah, that's where she's at. Oh, okay. I mean, no, no. I just took this beautiful body, and then after I was done with it, I mean, all these children. She's gone. It's old maid now. I'm not now. saying anything against big people, man. I, I used to date a big girl, and let me tell you, man, she was wonderful. You understand? Uh, I don't have a problem with big people. You know, and, uh, you got skinny people, you got fat people. You know, and let me tell you, the fat woman is soft and warm and good. Okay, 
And uh, I've been with some skinny women, and you know they had they had some bones poking out in different spots, and just you know that were uncomfortable. You know, so uh, fat, skinny, it's all good, man. You know, I've, I've been around. But uh, oh no, women the women are lovely. There's just there's there women were made for love, and men were made for war. I mean, yeah. without women, yeah. my yeah. God, this would be a hellish existence. Yeah. My God, it takes a, it takes a lot of different people to make a world, you know. And you got some people that's heavy. You got some people that's not heavy. You know, it's not it's not healthy to be skinny. It may not be healthy to be really big and fat, you know. But it is what it is, man. I just got love for it, for everybody wherever they at. Yeah, and the other thing is, is that because of the way I live my life as an activist and being locked up and. So many gangs coming out of the woodwork. I mean, my God, it, it, just gangs coming out of the woodwork and pound on me and my family so bad that, you know, some people, they, they turn to drugs or they do to certain things. Well, some people turn to food, food, you know, comfort food. Yeah. So you, you can't take a person and put them through so many, so many shots and yeah. not have them. Hey, I'm, know, with, I'm with, I'm with Tim. Tim say he like a big, you know what, you know, me too, man. Shoot. Give me forty five, fifty across the back. You feel me? Yeah. And and that's and a small waist too. Oh please. Uh, oh well, look, listen, my my Micah, he's, he's hit me on the freedomslip dot com chat. If he, if Micah wants to call in and uh, call me nuts, he wants to intellectually take me on the battlefield. Uh, tell him to call one. I am. I'll take him apart. Yeah, man, they saying you, you can ask mental, me anything. Hey, they uh, some people in here saying you a mental patient and stuff like that, man. But uh, you know, you right, may have, a mental patient. You yeah, when's have, the last time you heard a mental patient talk like I talk? That's what I'm trying to say, man. And that's why you should go on and get that radio show, man, and get it cracking, man. Look how well you've done. You've been on for two hours, basically, man. Okay, two hours. You can handle an hour, I know, by yourself, man. If nobody called in every week. Or every day or whatever. You feel me? Well, I got some, you know, I was able to get some political plays out there. So, um, you know, and I'm messing around with this Bill Gates thing. Um, I'm building a whole campaign, and I got a real big political atomic I'm holding. I'm going to tell you And this. if I don't like the way things are going, uh, I'm going to use it. Yeah. You're a special character, man. And you got you got a personality on this radio station already, whether you know it or not, man. Okay, and people can talk what they want to talk about you mental about this. You know, they say I'm mental too. Who cares? You know what I'm saying? Say what you want oh, to say. Oh, no, I don't care about No, I don't care about that. I just, you know, I just wish you'd call in so I could smack them around a little bit. That's all. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> no, yeah. people can say I'm nuts. Say, you know, I mean, I've been in the middle of two seven times. People can say what they want. Yeah. I don't care what people think. At least you've you got some experience in that area. You see, you see what I'm saying? Well, I know. I know who I am. Yeah. That's the thing. Amen. I, I know. I know. I'm a, I'm a big kick-ass guy. I know I'm a big intellectual. That's what I can I'm throw saying. big political plays. If I decide to throw Gates in there, and I set that political atomic off. You know how much that would shake the political world. You know what I could do. You know, I'm sitting back with all this power. See, people don't know. Power is in the idea. It's in the strategy. It's in the concept. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Power is not, you know, showing up and having all these people follow you. This and that. It's getting into inside the thought realm that where political reality is made getting in and influencing that and shaping it right. that's where that's where the power's at yep i had last week you know i did a show on psyops you know you was on remember and the, yeah you know the psychological operations going on and etc so you're right man it's all about that mind getting into that mind and if you mental that's even better man you feel me yeah with well, most people don't realize that it's the intelligentsia of the country there that you go. rule it there you and go. Their, right, their game is concepts, strategies, ideas. That's what they're all about. Amen. You get inside their heads, and you got you got inside the country. You can you can you can shape things. Amen. Just this like Obama, is... the worst mistake they could have made was put Obama there. Look at all the weapons he sold. Look at all the bullets the guy sold. Yeah. Look how he destroyed the credibility of the office of the president. I mean, look look at all the damage that was done. Now, if McCain got in there. Yeah. What's what's the first thing you think McCain would have done? It's exactly what he did. He authored that M D A bill. <laughs> yeah, McCain. He's a death head. He's real con. It's been he, we 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 would be martial law already with John McCain. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm I'm looking forward to 2012 here. 
you know, when it gets hot in the summer and all that kind of stuff, man, I just don't know where this thing is going, you know. I don't know. They say it's turning around, but I don't see it yet. No, no, we're going into the night. That's where we're going uh, when I am. Um... Yeah. And then you're going to, there'll be a come a time where it's going to be so dark and just so evil that you're going to say, you know what? I don't believe in this Jesus guy, yeah. but damn it, I'm going to believe it now. I'm going to make myself a Jesus. Because <laughs> unless he shows up, I can see where it's going. It's We're just going to go into, I don't know, maybe, you ever see the movie The Road? No. Oh, you ought to see the movie. It's called The Road. Yeah. You ought to take a look at that. Okay. Well, let me but, say uh, this. Uh, uh, yeah, let's look like time's up. This has been Urban Revolution on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. I'm your host, One I Am. I had Debbie with me on the right hand. Hijack has been on the phone all night with me for two hours. It's been wonderful. Hijack, you want to say something right quick? Yeah, no, that was a great show. I appreciate it. Let me on. I appreciate you being on, man. It was great. And we'll see y'all next time. Yeah, no, that, week. Donate some money. People, donate some money. Yeah, come on, keep us going. Give a couple of dollars, man, so I can come back next week. And I'm going to come back and I'm tell you something back. next week.